Hi, I'm uh, Mike Hardy with Speed Clean. I wanted to thank you for taking some time out of your day to uh, listen to me talk about the somewhat monotonous job of coil cleaning. I guess if you're in the business of making coil cleaning equipment, it's kind of exciting. Uh, but uh, our company, Speed Clean, along with uh, Brian Orr of the HVAC School, put together this presentation as a continuing education segment for Nate. Uh, Nate, for those of you that are unaware of it uh, or unfamiliar with it, stands for the North American Technical Excellence Program. And Nate is the nation's largest nonprofit certification organization for HVACR technicians. Uh, Nate certification validates that a technician has working knowledge of a system and you know, courses like this or continue education help uh, keep them current on, on trends. So this course uh, was put together for small package units. Uh, obviously, you know, coil cleaning is not always a one size fits all situation, but uh, in the next 30 to 40 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, hopefully you'll uh, be able to pick up at least one piece of information on a technique or best practice that you can apply to uh, your future coil cleaning jobs. So jumping right in, uh, an HVAC system, like any other installation, requires maintenance. If you don't clean and maintain the system, its performance obviously is going to start to slip and eventually the entire system will fail. And regular system maintenance ensures that the HVAC system delivers that consistent performance and lasts a long time. Now, some may argue that cleaning is the most important part of the HVAC system's maintenance. Being in the, the uh, world of coil cleaning, I, I have to agree with that uh, because system maintenance does help identify trends Coil cleaning does have a direct and immediate impact on the system's efficiency, capacity, and longevity. Now, there's no magic wand that can be used for coil cleaning. Cleaning is not just about spraying water at the unit with a garden hose. Rather, it's a series of steps that need to be followed to ensure positive results. So when it comes to coil cleaning, you want to clean until it's clean. Now, as I said, in this presentation, you're going to review uh, why coil cleaning is a vital part of a preventative maintenance program. And again, it's geared toward small residential coils, um, how to correctly complete the cleanings, and tips on the right tools to use. Then also at the end, uh, we're going to address the, uh, the old school adage that you don't necessarily need to clean. And uh, when we get to that slide, you'll see what I'm saying. So... You have two big reasons for coil cleaning. The first one's obviously heat transfer. And you know the purpose of the coil is to transfer heat from one medium to another through the walls of the tubing. And the most common type of coil for the direct transfer of heat from the refrigerant to air through the tubing or channels uses fins or spines which are attached to the tubing. And as you can see here, obviously in this uh, uh, image, you've got the clean air passing through and the dirt on the coil or the fouling that's insulating the coil and restricting the airflow. Now, obviously when these coils get coating of dirt on them, it acts as thermal insulation, as I just said, on the metal, and that impedes the movement of heat in and out of the coil. Now, dirtier foul condensers are obviously one of the most frequent service problems in the commercial refrigeration and air conditioning fields today. And is if a condenser coil is dirty or fouled, its ability to reject heat is severely affected. So airflow, another important factor. You know, when you have dirt or other contaminants blocking the fins, it causes a more substantial air pressure drop across that coil. And that results in lower airflow over the coil or higher power consumption on the motor, depending on the motor fan and type. Now, the main function of the condenser is to condense the refrigerant vapor to liquid. If a condenser becomes dirty, damaged, fouled, you're going to have less heat transfer taking place from the refrigerant to the surrounding ambient air. If less heat can be rejected to the surrounding air with an air-cooled condenser due to that fouling, heat will start to accumulate in the condenser, making the condensing temperature rise. So again, dirty coils, clean coils. The cleaner the coil, the more airflow you're going to get through there. Now you have some uh, broad impacts of dirty coils. First one is inefficiency. You know, cleaning coils is critical to maintaining peak efficiency of the system. Studies have shown an energy loss before cleaning 
before 10, between 10 and 37%, depending on the type of system and the level of fouling. You have performance and capacity. Dirty evaporator and condenser coils both cause high compression ratio, which results in less refrigerant circulation by mass and fewer BTUs of heat movement per hour. And then there's system longevity. Dirty coils result in a high compression ratio, which causes the compressor to run hotter and harder, potentially shortening its lifespan. Now, some other uh, broad impacts of dirty coils on a evaporator coil uh, in a uh, DX direct expansion system, the evaporator coil absorbs heat from the space to be cooled. When that coil is dirty, it can impede both airflow and heat transfer, resulting in less heat load on the coil. And then dirty condenser coils. You think about it, that condenser coil performs the reverse function of the ev evaporator by releasing heat from the system. When that coil gets dirty, the movement of heat from refrigerant through the tubing is reduced. So again, heat transfer is affected by dirty coils. So you can be faced with some challenges of proper cleaning. Some of them include damaging the fins, and that's either through the age of the coil or the cleaning method. As you can see in this image here, you've had a, a high pressure washer taken to the fins of the air handler. It's kind of flattened the fins. And again, that's affecting, affecting the heat transfer because you're not gonna have that air movement across the coil. You can remove factory coatings. That's usually a factor of a chemical reaction with the coil cleaner that you're using. You can cause damage from water or chemical runoff as part of that cleaning process, whether you're indoors or outdoors. Think about cleaning a uh, evaporator and a drop ceiling, clogged drain pan overflows, and now you're doing a cleanup job of ceiling tiles, computers, desks, and whatnot. And then the last thing to think about as a uh, challenge to uh, proper cleaning is the harming of the technicians or occupants with the chemicals, whether it's through the splashing of the chemical or through odors associated with applying it. Now, part of your coil cleaning preparation list should include the following. You should have gloves and eye protection. And that eye protection should be, uh, you know, goggles with, or something with splash shields, not just regular safety glasses. You wanna look at rags and towels. Uh, based on the cleaning job. Maybe if you're doing a uh, indoor mini split, maybe you have a beach towel in case you make a little a slightly, I don't want to, you know, never plan on making a mess, but always be prepared for it. Some drop cloths to protect the uh, surface or the areas around where you're cleaning. Want to have a water hose. Uh, don't always rely on a homeowner's garden hose if you're going to be doing a, a condenser cleaning job. Um, Always carry a wet-dry vacuum with a, uh, a, preferably if you have it with a blower attachment, because uh, you'll be able to use that wet-dry vacuum first off to uh, you know, vacuum up any spills or even use it to, uh, with a soft, uh, like an upholstery brush to clean the surface of coils if there's uh, dirt debris or dust on there. And the other thing, again, for coil cleaning, some soft bristle brushes for different coils, different applications. And a lot of guys will keep all those six items kind of packaged together with a bucket. And they'll have multiple buckets when they go out and doing cleaning jobs during the day. Now, as I said, coil cleaning is not a one size fits all situation. So you have to have, uh, think about having different tools, so to speak, in your arsenal. I'll kind of just run through these. So you start over to the left is the ever popular pump sprayer. Sometimes that uh, pump sprayer is going to do a, you know, going to be the right tool for the job for you, depending on the coil cleaner you need to, to apply or the situation. Um, the garden hose, which we just mentioned, go in the top center there, that orange machine is a, a portable coil cleaning machine. These have kind of uh, become a little more commonplace in the marketplace over the last couple of years. They're battery powered. They hold their own water, hold their own chemical and you can apply coil cleaner uh, on a coil and then rinse it with the you know water from that onboard water supply. The wet dry vacuum, as I said, you wanna be able to, you know, a good wet dry vacuum, reliable unit uh, for vacuuming up water and then for cleaning off the face of the coil. 
And um, also, if you do have a blower attachment on it, some guys will use that to blow the water off a coil before testing it. And we'll touch upon that a little later on. Um, over there on the right hand side is a right here is a uh, coil cleaning machine. Uh, it's kind of odd to say. So if you think about it in the last couple of years, uh, a lot of pressure washers have been put into the marketplace to clean coils. And the problem with pressure washers is the first word right off the bat, pressure. You end up having 2,000 to 3,000 PSI of water pressure um, along with a flow of anywhere from a gallon and a half to two and a half gallons of water a minute to clean a coil. Now you need on some coils, you need that flow of water. You need two gallons of water to clean a coil, but you don't need that 2000 PSI. So there are some manufacturers out there that are coming out with high volume, low pressure units. So you'll get two, two and a half, three gallons of water a minute, but only at three to 400 PSI. And that's a perfect combination for coil cleaning. Uh, lower right there, you have the ever popular fin comb. Everybody should own one of these. And I'm sure you know, it's at least one point in your life you've used one to, to straighten out some fins on a coil. Uh, a condenser brush, again, you know, a collection of uh, brushes are are great for for coil cleaning applications, different jobs. And you'll see later on somebody's kind of using a unique brush for, to clean a coil. Uh, for and then bottom center here is uh, a bib for cleaning ductless mini splits. Um, over the last few years, obviously that market of uh, ductless systems ha has grown. Uh, you have cassette units. You have um, the wall mount units console units now and they're becoming more popular because of their uh, ease of installation and, and for almost like spot cooling of rooms but um, you know instead of cutting that system out or the condenser out and clean it you have a, a bunch of clean in place solutions down the lower left there is a vapor steam cleaner um, out in the Atlantic provinces I think it was last year or the year before had a lot of uh, mold issues on on the heat pumps and um, it was trace back. Uh, well, actually, they had a lot of indoor air quality issues. So it was traced back to the mold on the heat pumps. So you had contractors going in and, and cleaning those using vapor steam. It's a chemical free method that basically instantly sanitizes the surface. So you can kill the mold and bacteria and chemical free, especially indoors. You don't have to worry about odors. Uh, this is kind of a, an interesting thing here, this uh, Milwaukee uh, portable leaf blower. Uh, we've seen over the last uh, year or so guys using these actually portable leaf blowers to clean coils off. So you, if you have to take a coil outside to clean it, um, and you want to obviously dry it off and bring it back inside, you're going to get good air volume through these blowers and, and you know get all that moisture off before you take that uh, air handler and carry it back into the house and potentially you know make a mess in there. So those are, you know, just some of the tools in your arsenal and, and you're going to find and adjust. You don't need to go out to every do job and, and, you know, or buy, have one for every job. But, you know, think about that in the back of your mind that there might be something better out there to what you're doing right now for, for coil cleaning. So let's get into some tips and best practices. So as I said before, and it's part of your, uh, you know, your um, preparation list to have a, uh, proper PPE and, you know, goggles with side shields for applying chemicals, especially, uh, you know, if you're doing say like a ductless unit, your, you know, your, your face tends to be right in front of that evaporator and you don't want to have splash back and get into your eyes. So, you know, wear eye protection. Uh, always want to disconnect the power. Uh, ensures the safety of the equipment and your safety. Utilize lockout and tagout procedures. You might not need it on a residential job, but if you're in a highly trafficked area, say like commercial or something, and you don't have your, uh, you know, a, a field of view toward the disconnect, again, it's a great thing to lock out and tag out. Um, you always want to protect the area and the equipment that you're working in. So move furniture out of the way, use drop cloths. Um, whenever you do in a residential setting, whenever you do need to move furniture, say again, cleaning a ductless unit. Um, and for some reason, somebody's got a, whatever, a Ming vase underneath there, communicate with a homeowner, ask them to move it or ask if they want 
help moving it. But uh, you know, don't just assume, go in there. You wanna protect that area, you wanna communicate. You always wanna pre-inspect the area, make sure it's, it's safe to work in. And is the, most importantly, is the equipment that you're gonna be cleaning actually functional? Don't know how many times I've heard guys going in there for a coil cleaning and they don't check to see if the unit actually uh, powers on in the first place. They clean it and they go to, to do uh, some tests afterwards and the, the unit was a DOA in the first place. And then when you do do that actual coil cleaning process, you always wanna use the appropriate pressure and water flow. Again, don't go in there with a, uh, you know, a, a high pressure washer to clean a, a condenser coil unless you're gonna be prepared to do some fin straightening afterwards. So some of the other things to keep in mind with best practices, you know, choosing the right chemical. You always wanna choose a chemical that fits the application. Um, the appropriate chemical for the cleaning job will be usually a mild cleaner. Sometimes you can use a, you know, a light detergent um, because many times you don't have a heavily fouled condenser. And if you do have a heavily fouled coil or condenser, again, be prepared to clean it twice. You know, uh, the key of a good cleaning is only to use as much chemical as is needed to do that job at hand. And the other thing is about uh, mixing the cleaner, using the proper dilution. You know, uh, some manufacturers will list, as you see in the image here, the uh, ratio and the dwell time on the bottle of coil cleaner to help you in the cleaning process. You don't want to assume that you know a stronger mixture of cleaner is going to do a better job. You know, these cleaners are designed by chemists and they've done a lot of lab tests as to what the best results will be. So unless you have a degree in chemistry, don't bother going off on your own, follow what they recommend. Um, and then lastly, uh, in order to uh, avoid any problems, you always want to remember to add the chemical to the water not water to the chemical. And uh, that'll help, uh, if there is any splashing, help minimize any uh, you know, detrimental effects of that. So you've got your coil cleaner all mixed, you're all ready to go. Now you wanna hit that coil and clean it. So a couple of steps to think about, a pre-rinse process. You know, it's a good practice to pre-rinse those coils before cleaning whenever practical. Um, that'll help loosen uh, any or at least to remove any surface dirt and help get down to that uh, dirt that's actually on the surface of the coil that you're gonna need that cleaner to actually uh, go up against and, and help remove that deposit. So you wanna apply the cleaner and you wanna build that foam. You know, it's always uh, during the cleaning process, it's most effective to apply the cleaner against the unit's airflow. So you, you wanna clean really from the inside out. And if you think about it, that dirt or debris only settled on the front part of the coil. So you don't wanna to have to use water to push it through the whole thickness of the coil uh, you, where you can get behind it and send it out the path of least resistance, that short, whatever we'll use, uh, you know, quarter inch or a couple of millimeters that it traveled into, uh, traveled into the bed of the coil. You know, send it back the way it came from, you don't, and that'll avoid any potential damage to the coil as well. Then when you're using foaming cleaner, you wanna build foam from the bottom up to give it the maximum amount of dwell time for the foam. And if you think about it, again, most of the dirt and debris is settling in the bottom half to two thirds of the coil. So, you know, if you start at the bottom, that gives that coil cleaner enough time to emulsify that dirt, loosen it up. So when you go to rinse it, you're gonna, you're gonna you know, it's gonna have its maximum effect. When you rinse it, the coil is gonna be clean you can kind of avoid having to clean that coil a second time. Now, when you're talking about dwell time on a coil, you know, you wanna use the, the manufacturer's recommended time and most manufacturers, uh, you know, want you to have that coil cleaner sit on the surface for five to 10 minutes after it's applied and before rinsing it off. Um, and then when you do get to rinsing the coil, you wanna rinse the coil entirely with a good flow of water, again, opposite the direction of the airflow and you always want to, you know, you need to almost visibly see that water stream enter exiting out the other side of the coil. And then the coil should be visibly free of dirt, grass, lint, grease, and what other contaminants may have been on there. And uh, you want to serve that, uh, you know, that serves basically as visual evidence that the coil is properly cleaned. So when you do that, you want to look for 
you want to look for a clean stream of water coming out of there. Um, and you also want to do, which I've noticed a lot on rooftop air handlers, you want to make sure that you clean the corners as well. I've seen a lot of coils beds that are becoming brittle in the in the four corners because the technicians are basically focusing only in the center part of the coil and not on the edges. So when you do apply that coil cleaner, wherever you apply it, you want to make sure you rinse it adequately. You want to make sure you see that clean stream of water coming off that coil after you've cleaned it. So you always then you want to allow that coil to dry afterwards. You don't want to test uh, this operation of the system or charge it until you have allowed those coils to dry because you know if you're testing on a wet coil you're going to have a false test result. You want to inspect the coil after you clean it. You want to double check that the cleaning didn't do any damage to the coils and fins and if it did obviously you have that fin comb with you you go and, and straighten those fins back out. And then um, you know special note about microchannel coils um, as you see more and more of them in the marketplace, you need to take extra care not to damage those channels um, because it, you know it's an all aluminum uh, assembly of that coil. So you basically wanna follow the manufacturer's cleaning recommendations and that's based, uh, based on the cleaning approach and the type of coil cleaner to be used. Now we'll launch a little bit into specific applications um, uh, evaporator cleaning, as you see before here, as I said about different types of brushes, I know a technician that ends up using a, a toilet brush on evaporator coils because it's a nice, you know, he's got a, a round brush. He can kind of roll it down the inside surface of the coil. And, you know, when possible, you want to uh, clean that coil in place. Um, you know, some guys have a rule of thumb if a coil is more than 10 years old, they don't want to clean it because they feel they're going to do more harm than good before. Um, so, you know, even before you clean it, you want to inspect the coil and advise the uh, homeowner if you can't clean that coil because, because of that situation. Maybe the fins are brittle and it's not the best, uh, best uh, solution there. So, you know, many uh, evaporator coils, uh, especially A-frame slant coils, can be cleaned in place. And when you're cleaning that coil in place, you want to make sure, first off, again, you want to protect your work here, protect all sensitive finished surfaces, as well as, as electrical components. Um, if it's not practical to clean that coil in place, you should remove the coil, cut it out, and uh, clean it outside. Uh, if you do need to cut the coil out, you again, you want to communicate with that homeowner what you're doing and ask them if there's a good place to clean that coil. Um, you know, whereas you think, hey, cleaning it on the lawn might be good, they might be concerned about that. So communicate with the homeowner where you want it, that you need to take the coil out and where you can clean it. And uh, if you do work in the grass area to clean it, uh, put a drop cloth down or, and also, uh, pre-rinse uh, the grass, you know, sp spray some water down first. So when you do use the coil cleaner, it's going to be kind of pre-diluted when it hits the grass and it won't kill any of the lawn. And then uh, back to allow that coil to dry before you bring it back inside. You don't want to be dripping water in the, uh, you know, as you go through the house. So that's where that, that uh, wet dry vacuum with the, the discharge or the cordless leaf blower comes into play. That'll help speed up the drying process. So you can, you know, get that coil back in and finish the job up. So another application is ductless evaporator cleaning. Uh, it's not really just the evaporator, but uh, the blower wheel on the ductless, especially on, on mini splits. Uh, this is where uh, Speed Clean's coil jet and mini split bib are known uh, as the solution for, for clean in place coil cleaning. If you think about it traditionally, these units were uh, system was charged down, taken off the wall, and cleaned outside, and that was a you know about a three hour process. But by uh, mounting that bib and using the coil jet or the pumps, you know the uh, pressurized pump sprayer, you're able to clean that unit in probably an hour or less, and it kind of takes the uh, the hesitation from you know cleaning that a contractor might've had in the past. And, and really it adds a, it's a value added service. It's maybe an additional revenue stream for people servicing or cleaning ductless mini slits. We have a lot of contractors now that have, uh, you know, have a whole secondary uh, 
company or business cleaning heat pump units. So you're able to use pressurized water. You're here, you're using less than uh, about three quarters of a gallon a minute in this, this uh, little video snippet. And uh, the dirt and debris is coming off that coil, off that blower wheel and funneling down into a five gallon bucket through that plastic bib. So if you're not doing uh, ductless servicing, it's something you should consider. And uh, you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna continue being uh, those installs are are gonna continue coming into the marketplace. So it's a a, a job that should be tackled. Um, some other specific applications: small refrigeration coils. You know, these are generally in tight places, and you oftentimes need to limit your water usage. Uh, we have a vapor steam cleaner, or there's a, basically a lot of vapor steam cleaners out in the marketplace, but uh, you can, should consider using vapor steam because it's a chemical free cleaning solution. If you think about using a reach in cooler in a uh, Tim Hortons, you don't need to remove that food product when using vapor steam because it's chemical free and you get maybe just a few ounces of water. So you can go in, clean the the dirt and debris out of the coils of that cooler and you're just using a rag to, to wipe out the dirt, uh, clean up the dirt and the, you know, the little bit of water that's generated from the steam. Um, if you do need to use chemicals uh, as a last resort, you want to use always food safe cleaner and a degreaser. Uh, the other thing that vapor steam is good for is de-icing coils where uh, it'll help get a coil back into service obviously a lot quicker because you're hitting it with high temperature uh, steam that helps loosen that that ice and 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 reduce the downtime of the the, the uh, unit. Other applications are larger coils. Now you have many larger condenser coils. There are multi row and should be split periodically to clean them. Uh, if you just clean from the outside in, you're actually driving the dirt between the rows where that uh, dirt will sit between the the rows of fins and impede the airflow. So a lot of uh, solutions include being able to come down with uh, split the coil slightly and then there are right angle one detachments that, that are made come down between those rows of fins to clean each individual section. Now, uh, exactly how to split the coil and how successful you are cleaning on one split basically varies from system to system. So that's you know going back to approaching each job differently because there's no blanket solution to coil cleaning. Now, last thing, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, you know, there sometimes is, you know, people wonder why there is a need to clean coils. And um, last year, a professor at the University of Nebraska conducted a study that appeared to indicate that cleaning condenser coils made no difference on system performance and efficiency. And I believe it might have been uh, sponsored by the ASHRAE Association here in the States. Uh, to summarize the results of his study, which was conducted in a lab, um, was that washing the airside fouling of condensers does not have a significant effect on heat transfer capacity, even though it significantly decreases the coil's airside pressure drop. And then in some cases, fouling can even increase the heat transfer capacity. Washing with detergent had no meaningful advantage when compared to washing with water only. So that kind of got uh, our, our friends down at the HVAC school in Florida thinking, um, you know, could this data be correct? Is it all about heat transfer? And obviously, you know, anybody who comes across a condenser cutting out on high head pressure uh, with dirty fins will tell you that the coils need to be cleaned and nine times out of 10, that solves the problem. So what they did is they, chose a very dirty condenser to perform a comprehensive before and after test. And in order to keep this testing as accurate as possible, a real world application was chosen and rigorous testing procedures were followed. They cleaned a two ton 1999 train R22 uh, 10 sear spine fin heat pump split system with a direct return that was operating a 750 CFM indoor airflow and a 0.4 inch water column total external static pressure on the blower with a fixed piston type metering device. And uh, as you can see here, the test process, they allowed the system to run for 20 minutes continuously, took detailed message, uh, measurements sufficient to compare wattage, total BTU hour heat removal, and the EER of the system. 
and they accomplish that using wire, wireless uh, digital instruments in the Measure Quick uh, app. Then they went and cleaned the condenser coil only. They didn't perform any other service to it and made no other adjustments to the refrigerant charge. Then afterwards, they allowed the system to run continuously for 20 minutes to ensure the coil was completely dry. Um, they confirmed that by measuring the condenser air dew point, entering and leaving. And then, you know, they took uh, beforehand and they took the same results afterwards. And then they used a speed clean coil jet and a neutral alkaline cleaner working from the inside out. Again, that recommended system, uh, method of cleaning against the airflow. Um, and you can see from this slide here, some before and after shots of that coil and uh, some measurements from the measure quick uh, uh, results. And since they're kind of hard to read here, I, I'll summarize them on the next slide. And you can see that uh, you know, the initial testing results clearly showed that the high, that the head pressure and liquid line temperature were both high with low subcooling and superheat. The measured system performance was poor, even though the evaporator coil, air filter, and blower wheel were quite clean considering the age of the system. And then after cleaning, the head pressure, suction pressure dropped, the subcooling and superheat increased, and the compressor amperage dropped. And that became clear after the cleaning that the system was slightly low on refrigerant uh, because it maintained a, a stable 31 degrees superheat. You know, obviously superheat went from 1.3 up to 31.5. And then um, the system performed slightly better in terms of decreased wattage and increased BTU removal after the cleaning. So when you look down, total wattage decreased, the EER increased, um, and basically the unit was based back to almost factory conditions. Um, you know, the con compressors working at lower amperage and uh, you had the proper superheat, which again will statistically prolong the compressor life and then afterwards you could see it, uh, after the test was complete nine ounces of r22 were were uh, added in order to achieve the factory required superheat and that improved the er and the capacity even better so at the end of the day dirty condenser gets cleaned gets maintained immediate effects on system capacity performance and longevity So to kind of start wrapping it up with coil cleaning, you have your do's and your don'ts. You do want to wear proper safety gear. You don't want to forget to turn off power and confirm the equipment is de-energized. You do come prepared with the proper equipment. Don't assume a garden hose is the answer to all clean coil cleaning applications. Do, uh, do uh, dilute cleaners appropriately. Don't assume stronger is better. Do inspect coils before and after cleaning, and don't do cause damage to da fragile coils. You want to clean until there is a visual difference. You don't want to just spray water around and call it good. You want to use the appropriate pressure and flow. You don't want to use a high pressure washer. You want to prep the space to prevent damage, and you don't want to cause water damage. So if you wanted to get a copy of this uh, coil cleaning guide, you can go to our website, speedclean.com. And up on the banner there, there's a click through for the coil cleaning guides. We have one on uh, ductless mini split and this contractor coil cleaning that we just talked about. And uh, this guide, as I said, was put together in conjunction with the HVAC school. Um, they're uh, an organization which is uh, run by technicians for technicians. Uh, they do a uh, almost weekly podcast, which is very educational. So if you uh, ever have the chance to, or you're into podcasts, if you haven't listened to them, you should subscribe to them and uh, you, you know get even greater knowledge on, on the equipment that you're maintaining and servicing in this industry. Um, at this point, I'll take any other questions that you might have. Um, and uh, thank you for listening. Now, if I could only find the controls to make this stop, I'd be happy.